Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is the sixth video of this new series. It is getting colder by the day in Canada and quite likely in other countries as well. It is the best season to practice Fa Jin exercise. So, if you live in an area that has the same weather conditions, I highly recommend you make the most of it. Our bodies are naturally suited for fudging exercise in the summer as the warm weather makes it easier for the body to stay flexible and mobile. But during the winter, we should cultivate our energy more than other seasons. What I mean by this is that we should reduce intensive physical exercise but still try to sweat enough when working on gentle movements. We have to adjust our practice not only based on our own personal interest but also follow seasonal changes. There are two types of approaches to this concept. Some people practice a lot during the summer. Furthermore, they want to sweat a lot each time. But during the winter, they practice much less and try not to sweat each time. However, my personal experience is that I do not change the quantity of my practice no matter what the season but adjust the quality according to each season. In the summertime, I will try my best not sweat a lot while practicing since I may already be sweating enough due to the weather. But during the winter, I will try to sweat as much as I can because it will help my circulation. To stretch our body, to practice some single movement and to emphasize on Zhan Zhuang can help our body maintain strength. Master Ma Hong, one of my Tai Chi teachers, once told me that the balanced state of practice in terms of physical intensity is that we should sweat but not run out of breath. I follow his advice even today. So, I still try not sweat more during practice in the summer than in the winter. I suggest you try this yourself and find out firsthand if it's effective. Let's go back to the topic of the fall season. So, in the fall season, we can practice more Fa Jin exercise as this is the best season between the extreme cold and the hot weather conditions. We can practice more intensive physical movements without having the same concerns as in the summer or winter. Since it is fall and I claim that fall is the best time to practice Fa Jin. I'd like to introduce an important topic related to the nature of different type of forces. So, topics included in today's video. First, original yin and original yang in Tao's practice. Second, yin yang and gang rou. Third, common misconception of gang and rou. Fourth, important principle of gang and rou in the internal styles. Fifth, demonstration. Sixth, take aways. Again, this is an abstract but necessary topic to all internal style practitioners. Let's get started. Topic 1. Original Yin and Original Yang in Taoist practice. I believe that anyone who is interested in Chinese culture would understand the yin-yang theory or at least be aware of it. Also, if you have watched my prior videos, especially those intro introducing Tai Chi history and practice, I'm sure you would understand yin-yang theory very well. Since yin-yang theory is one of the fundamental concepts in Chinese philosophy and culture in general, 
Today, I'd like to talk about it a bit further. Please watch this image. I'm sure all of you are aware that it is the Tai Chi symbol. Now, my question is, what is the small white spot in the black half? And what is the small black spot in the white half? Well, a simple answer is that the white spot in the black half is the yang energy in the yin energy, while the black spot in the white half is the yin energy in the yang energy. The changing of yin and the yang starts from the growing of the yang energy in the yin. Well, the changing of yang to yin starts from the growing of the yin energy in the yang. In general, the growth of the small spot will trigger the changing of the yin and the yang states. Furthermore, the small spots in the large area are the driving force behind yin yang changes. So, keep this in mind for now and I will explain it further after introducing another interesting knowledge. Well, we are on the subject of the symbol. Let's look at two more symbols here. They are Kan and Li, two trigrams in Bagua or eight trigram system. I introduced this concept in my prior video on Bagua's eight direction forces. Link is in the description. Please have a look if you haven't already. So, what is Kan? Kan represents water. What is Li? Li represents fire. In the Bagua system, each trigram consists of three lines, including the continuous line and the breaking line, or both. Each line is called Yao in Chinese. The continuous line is called Yang Yao, and the breaking line is called Yin Yao. And they are the basic elements of a Gua or trigram. For example, the Kan Gua consists of two Yin Yao and one Yang Yao, which means that its Yin energy is more than its Yang energy. And represents water. The Li Gua consists of two Yang Yao and one Yin Yao, which means that its Yang energy is more than its Yin energy and represents fire. It is worth noting that there is a Yin energy in the fire and a Yang energy in water. In other words, a little Yin in Yang and a little Yang in Yin. Furthermore, According to ancient Chinese philosophy, the original yin energy is the yin yao in the fire trigram, while the original yang energy is the water trigram. Oh, the original yang is the yang part in the water, and the original yin is the yin part in the fire. Now, let's look at the yin yang symbol again. The original yin is the black spot in the yang half, and the original yang is the white spot in the yin half. Again, please keep in mind that no matter the yin yang symbols or the water and the fire trigrams, the smaller part actually triggers the change of the yin yang state, which is the real yin and the yang. Topic 2. Yin Yang and Gang Rou First of all, we have to know what is Gang and what is Rou. Literally speaking, Gang means hard, solid, and strong in English. In Chinese philosophy, it represents the Yang energy or anything that represents strong, vibrant, bright, upward-moving energy. On, on the contrary, the Rou means soft or flexible. In Chinese philosophy, it represents the Yin energy or anything that represents soft, smooth, inactive, or stable. 
in martial arts, gang indicates being strong and solid, while rou indicates being flexible. So very often, people correlate yang with gang and yin with rou. This is how people describe a character of a movement. For example, a movement can be gang or solid and strong while other movements can be rou or flexible. Very often, people use the term gang rou xiangji to describe a good practice that integrates gang and rou together. Here, gang means solid and strong, rou means flexible, xiang means mutually, ji means complementary. Together, this term means that gang and rou are mutually complementary and integrated together. By the way, in the ancient time, gang and rou were originally used to describe one's personality, attitude, and ethical behavior, which was a part of terms used beyond the physical nature of certain things. For example, Confucius said one must perform righteousness according to the rules of priority and speak in humanity, which also uses this term to talk about one's attitude and conduct by using this term as well. According to Confucian standard, a strong and firm yet flexible and adaptable personality would be considered ideal which exemplifies the concept of gang and rou. Again, in martial art, gang, rou, xiang ji, or the integration of gang and rou in practice is the term used in describing a high level of martial practice. To describe a movement, gang and rou are used very often in Chinese practice. To summarize, Gang is used to describe a strong, solid force, while Rou is a flexible force. They perfectly reflect the yin and the yang concept. Topic 3 Common Misperception of Gang and Rou Well, of course, there are different explanations of Gang and Rou in different fields. But if we focus on martial arts, Gang and Rou have specific meanings. If you do not understand it well, you will easily make mistakes in practice. For example, some people think that Gang means hard and Rou means soft. I would say that definition alone omits a lot of nuance which lead people to make many terrible mistakes in their practice. Let me explain this nuance. Gang may symbolize hardness, but not all the qualities associated with it. Gang actually means solid and strong but not stiff or rigid. Similarly, Rho symbolizes softness but not all the qualities associated with it. Rho actually means flexible but not floppy. So a common mistake is that Instead of practicing solidity and strength, people practice stiffness and rigidity which you probably have seen in many Xing Yi practitioners. Similarly, another common mistake is that instead of practicing flexibility, people end up practicing floppiness, which I'm sure you must have noticed in many Tai Chi practitioners. Furthermore, we also need to balance Gang and Rou, which will be explained in the next topic. So, make sure you correctly understand these nuances and it will make a world of differences to your practice. Please don't forget that we are talking about martial art. Self-defense is one of the basic functions of any martial art no matter internal or external, Tai Chi or Xing Yi or whatever else. Being soft or floppy is a terrible idea in any self-defense situation. You are only fooling yourself if you think 
soft or floppy training will help you. By the way, I have witnessed a lot of terrible practice on account of people misunderstanding these terms. For example, some people practice Xing Yi like Tai Chi, perform Tai Chi like a dance, and perform Ba Gua as if committing a burglary. And even worse, they claim that they practice the real internal style and criticize those who have real power and force as too hard, too fast, or too external, or whatever else come to their mind. Actually, their practice is polluting the community. You may think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. Please think about this situation in our community. I'm sure you can come across many examples based on your experience. To summarize this topic, Gang and Rou can be considered subset of Yin and Yang. All Gang and Rou are Yang and Yin, but not all Yang and Yin are Gang and Rou. Yin and Yang form the basic nature of any entity, while Gang and Rou have to satisfy specific criteria in describing forces. The nuances involved in Gang and Rou and the difference they can make to practice make it critical for practitioners to understand Gang and Rou. So, how are the principles of Gang and Rou applied in practice? This brings us to the next topic. Topic 4 Important Principle of Gang and Rou in the Internal Styles. It's often better to point out common mistakes in practice in order to clarify misconceptions. At the same time, it would be better to clarify them by introducing some important principles in practice. I summarize some of the principles into the following six sentences, grouped into three pairs. I'd like to read them in Mandarin first and then in English. Zheng Gang Chu Zi Rou, Zhen Rou Chu Zi Gang. Yu Gang Yao Xian Rou, Yu Rou Bi Xian Gang. Gang Rou Tong Bian Hua, Dong Jing Yi Shun Jian. Now, in English, Real Gang from Rou, Real Rou from Gang. Second, Rou before Gang, Gang before Rou. Third, Practice Gang and Rou dynamically. Real Gang and Rou are momentary. Now, let me explain them. First, Real Gang from Rou, Real Rou from Gang. You have to know that in order to develop a Gang of strong and solid force, you have to focus on Rou of flexibility and fluidity practice. Again, Flexible force is not soft. It looks soft but still maintains all of the character of a force. Especially, muscles should maintain a certain level of tension akin to the strong and solid force. Please do not try to develop the real strong and solid force by keeping your body soft. Flexibility and not softness is the key to developing a solid force. At the same time, the Rou force or flexibility is from Gang force. This sounds counterintuitive in the beginning, but with sufficient hard practice over time, you will develop flexibility and adaptability. When focusing on the Gang force training, the character of your force will become flexible. This flexibility achieved through the strong and solid force training is the real flexible force. It looks soft, but it is very strong in nature. This is the Rho force or the real flexible force. Second, Rho before Gang, Gang before Rho. These two sentences seem contradictory. Actually, they are not. 
The relationship between Gang and Rho is just like the relationship between Yin and Yang. They are codependent and do not exist in isolation. Therefore, Rho would not exist without the Gang or vice versa. Since they do not exist in isolation, the training to achieve one would have would also involve the other. Both of these forces should be practiced simultaneously. In other words, you should make consistent and simultaneous progress in training both Gang and Rho forces. This is the one of the key aspects in achieving the ideal result in practice. You cannot separate the practice of Gang force from Rho force and vice versa. If you separate them, you also render them ineffective. So, pay attention to both of them in any stage of practice. Third, practice Gang and Rho dynamically. Real Gang and Real Rho are momentary. A very important point in developing Gang and Rho force is the dynamic application of both forces. It is easy to demonstrate these forces in a stationary situation such as holding a stance, but that is just the beginning. At a higher level, one should be able to dynamically apply these forces while moving. I would like to remind you that the gang and the row forces are normally applied at the end of the martial movement, not during the movement. The movement is essentially just preparation for the actual attack. Releasing force at the correct moment is critical for effective self-defense. To summarize this topic, we cannot isolate one force from the other. Both forces should be practiced simultaneously in order to fully master them since each one depends on the other and they are inseparable. Topic 5. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a method of practicing of the Gang Jin and the Rou Jin by alternating the intensity of strength as a single movement exercise. Okay, let me demonstrate an exercise to practice the Gang Jin and the Rou Jin by alternating the different way of uh, practice the force. So you can use the Xing Yi Pi Quan or Metal Fist to practice this. So the key is alternate between the Gang Force and the Rou Force. So you can start from here. So let's say three times of a Gang Force, then three times of a Rou Force. Gang force, then <coughs> row force, <coughs> then <coughs> row force, then <coughs> gang force, then <coughs> row force. <coughs> so alternate the intensity of the force when using the fajin exercise. That is the important part of how to practice this exercise by alternating two type of force in one exercise. Topic 6 Takeaways This video was mainly about the concept of Gang and Rou. We looked at the following important topics. First, a review of Yin and Yang along with the concept of real Yin gave rise to Yang and real Yang gave rise to Yin. Second, Gang and Rou are solid and flexible forces, including their common misconceptions. Third, key principles of Gang, Jin, and Rou Jin practice, including a short demonstration. That brings up to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.